in these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. Ten thirty. All right, folks, this is Rick Robinson with you. I want to tell you about some friends of mine from a company called Security Enforcement Specialists. When I ran my security agency for 12 years, I worked with one of these partners on a daily basis. He's been involved in this agency now, and with his other partner, they do have over 30 years of experience in the private security industry. If you own a business and you need someone to keep you or your customers or residents safe, then I highly recommend contacting Security Enforcement Specialists today. Give them a call at 405-703-1796. Again, that's 405-703-1796. Again, tell them Rick from K98 Talk sent you. Like I said, if you need the help, they are here for you, so make sure that you uh, go look them up, check them out, and see what they can do. Wrong way! Welcome to the Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. To get up to like $68,000, my heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Tax Shield A plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than ten thousand dollars to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose. U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Call eight hundred four seven one thirty two eighty seven. U.S. Tax Shield. Boo raw. Yes. <laughs> The internet will never be the same. You're listening to K98talk.com. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. Yes, it is I, your lovable host, Elrod, coming to you live from my bunkerized home studio somewhere within the great granite state of New Hampshire, where the state motto is still, live free or die. It is not big government or bust. And I checked again today, and it's still live free or die. It is Thursday, Thursday, August the 20th, in the year of our Lord, 2015. The number that you can call this evening, if you wish to join me live... Even if you're a liberal, especially if you're a liberal, the number is toll-free, 603-835-3224. Again, it's 
603-835-3224. Got a lot to talk about and go through tonight. Um, as usual, as we do every, you know, I get it every, I don't have a lack of, you know, I don't lack for, for anything to, to discuss with you on the air anywhere, actually, uh, simply because of what people in our government do to us instead of for us. Now, I really wish this was a program all about, um, you know, informing you of all the wonderful things that our that our uh, local, state, and federal government is doing for us, like they're supposed to via uh, the federal constitution and the and the various states' constitutions. Uh, I, well, maybe that that might be boring radio, but I would like to have boring radio. You know, just, you know, just just once, I would like to have boring radio instead of having to always talk about the things that our government at various levels is doing to us to take away our, our, our liberty and to limit how we can live. I mean, it, think about this for a second. You can go to various municipalities across the country or various states, and, and it, it, we're talking modern-day laws, rules, and regulations that have just gotten out of hand. And I know some people are saying, well, you know, we need all these new, because this is a different era, Rod. This is a different time. And I'm like, no, mankind is not any different. Why? How is it different today than it was 100 years ago for your need for water? Everybody still needs water. Well, did you know that in some communities or some states, it's illegal, illegal. You can be fined, arrested, and even jailed for collecting rainwater off your roof. How ridiculous is that? You can get fined for not wearing your seat belt in 49 out of 50 states. You're driving down the road, not harming anybody, and you're not wearing a seat belt is not harming anybody, yet you're the one that is that is branded a criminal if you don't put on your seat belt while in your vehicle. You know, it, it, there are some municipalities uh, around the country where even if you do not need to be, you have to be connected to the grid if it is available to you. So, in other words, uh, you know, maybe you put solar panels on your roof and, and, and or you have a, uh, a wind generator in your yard and you produce more electricity than you possibly need. Well, or possibly use. Well, in some communities, in some municipalities around this wonderful country, land of the free, you have to be connected to the grid. You have to be connected to your local power company, electric company. Now, now you might think, well, that's not a big deal. Well, it is when you don't need it and you have to pay for the privilege of just being connected every month. Just like... You know, in, some, in many communities across the country, you, you, you may have a well. You may have a well and a rainwater collection system where it's legal, where you don't need to connect to municipal water. But you have to connect because they say it's the law. And you, you can say, well, I'll just turn it off. Now, now, that's what some people say. Well, just turn off the, you know, the water at, at, the, um, at the valve is at the inlet. Well... Yeah, you can do that, but you still have to pay the pay the, the either the government or the the water company every month just for the privilege of being connected to the water source. Even if you don't use a drop, I'm literally if you do not if you turn off the uh, the water at as it enters your house at the source. So no what so no. Uh, none of that water can get into your house from the street, from the from the water company. You still have to pay a monthly fee every month just for being connected. Same with sewers. I mean, there are a lot of people that have very functional, very efficient um, uh, uh, septic systems, but a community might decide, well, we're gonna we're gonna build in and put in a uh, uh, a sewage treatment center. Which, by the way, in believe it or not, in a lot of communities. 
a, you know, a sewer system with a treatment plant is worse, environmentally speaking, than having your own septic system. Now, now, you have to understand that we're supposed to be doing all of this to protect the environment, right? Well, yeah, we got to protect the environment. We need to build a sewage uh, treatment plant. Well, environmentally speaking, that's often worse than a septic system. But again, when they decide to do that and extend the sewer pipes out past your house, you have to connect. And in, in that particular case, no, you don't get to turn off the, the outflow and, and direct it to your, to your uh, septic system. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, you know, in many communities where they have a, a, a sept, uh, sewer system uh, and a treatment plant, you have to connect. You have to disconnect from your, from your, uh, you know, from your own system and you have to connect and you will be charged for the outflow. You know, for the waste. Now, you may think, well, you know, I don't have a lot of waste. Well, doesn't matter. You're going to get charged for it. And it, it, I, I, I know of stories that where people have thought they could be sneaky and just connect back up to their septic system. No, 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 no. If they do, if and they notice, they notice, if they notice there's no outflow, they're going to come to your house and try to, and, and try to figure out why. Because they want to, one, they, they're not, they can't bill you for it, for your usage. So if you're not using it, and, uh, you know, it's not, it's not an abandoned home, or you're not on vacation, or, you know, six months, out, if it's a certain amount of time, and you're not using the system, and they come out and check, and find that you're con- not connected, or not flowing into the system, oh, not only will they probably fine you, they will do something called condemn your property, meaning you can't even live there. There might not be a single problem with the house. I mean, it might meet every single code imaginable. It might be a brand new house, you know, just built in 2015. But if they come out there and they find that you're not connected and you're supposed to be connected by law, they can condemn your house, which means you can't live there. Legally, and if you are there and they catch you living there, they can arrest you. Now, how would you like that? Uh, be arrested for living in your own home. So, this is the type of stuff that we, t- that unfortunately, we have to talk about because it's proliferating, you know, from from coast to coast, from border to border. And we're also getting this kind of stuff from the federal government. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do this. Uh, well, uh, wait a minute. I, th- I thought we had a constitution and we had a bill of rights and all that kind of stuff. No, 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 no. That, that, that It's not going against the bill of rights. And if it is, then they're going to propose, well, how about we just amend the constitution like freedom of speech? Oh, we need to amend the constitution. I find it fascinating that people that there are so many people on both sides of the political aisle that don't like the Citizens United decision. Because they continually say, well, we need to get the money out of politics. I don't know how many times I got to tell you this. Even back in the days of George Washington, our first president, there was money in politics. You will never, ever, 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 ever get money out of politics. You know, this whole uh, McCain-Feingold thing was to try to get money out of politics. Well, what happened instead? We ended up with super PACs. And more money is flowing in than, than people ever thought was there before. So you're not going to get rid of money out of politics. And the only thing that happens when they try to make these laws to try to make things better is to limit your freedom. And a lot of times, not only is it limiting your freedom, but it's directly contradictory to the Constitution. And then we have, you know, a, a number of activist judges who who say, no, 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 that's OK. That's, that's not going against the Constitution. And so now we're hearing a lot of de- uh, talk no debate, a lot of talk from the Obama administration. Well, maybe it's time that we amend the Constitution and limit people's freedom of speech. Well, who's going to decide what speech should be acceptable and what should not? So this is the kind of stuff that I have to constantly, and those like me in this, in this particular field, or this particular profession, we have to constantly be, you know, be on guard for and tell you about because you, the people, actually then have to go out there and make a decision on what type of country and what type of life you want to live. 
you know, what type of country you want to live in? You want to live in the in the home of the brave, land of the free, or you want to live in a socialistic, uh, uh, or or fascist or communistic type of of government? You know, we're we're never going to have a um, a monarchy. Thank goodness for that. But you know, do we want that kind of a system that isn't a free type of system? Now, before you answer, and if you think you're going to answer in the positive, yeah, we want you know more government intervention. Well. Why is it that everybody on the planet, if they had the vast majority of people who are ever surveyed across the globe, it doesn't matter what country that you, you're talking about, if they know about the United States and they had the opportunity, the vast majority of people would legally immigrate, migrate to the United States. So if all these other countries were so great... Why do so many of their citizens, if they had the opportunity and it was feasible for them, would they make the trip here? Now, we're talking, you can go to Sweden or Finland. And look, I got a cousin who lives in Sweden. And he doesn't, well, he's married to a Swede and he has two children who are Swedes. They're his, by the way. They're, he's, a, he's the biological father. But he doesn't praise Sweden for its government. No, and, and people do not praise Finland for its god. I, you know, in fact, yeah, uh, um, there. I was. I had this discussion earlier today about. Uh, we were talking about languages, and uh, a Frenchman from France, and a black Frenchman, mind you, he was black. But he was from, not, not from Haiti. He was French, born and raised in France. And we were talking about languages because, you know, we were, I was spouting off, you know, what little French I knew. And he goes, ha, ha, people try to speak French. Uh, and he was, you know, he was basically, and there were certain words that I was purposefully butchering. And he was laughing. Uh, not French Canadian, but French. And he would talk about, you know, how people try to speak French. And we were, we got on the, the subject of languages and we were talking about how English, uh, especially American English is, is very difficult to learn, uh, for, for many people around the world. And we got on the subject of, well, English is by far not the most difficult language on the planet. In fact, a lot of people here in the United States would consider French to be, uh, rather difficult to learn too. And French, actually, you know, if you actually paid attention, I took French in high school and college. And if you actually paid attention to French, even though they have this feminine and masculine type of speech uh, and diction, you know, you have to know that 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 a cassette is uh, feminine and a cassette player is male and that kind of th- uh, that kind of th- uh, thing, which is really kind of odd that they would, you know, certain languages, a lot of languages do that. Uh, they have this masculine and feminine type of, uh, of, of vocabulary. And French is one of them. And, you know, we were talking about how, you know, some, some people here in this country, whether they be American or, or, you know, United States or from some other country, some, uh, they, they talk about how difficult it, it can be to learn French. And then we got on, on the Asian dialects, you know, like China and Japan. And somebody said, well, you know, Asians are aliens because no, their language is nothing like any other language on the planet. I mean, you can't, if you're not, you, that's why they, you know, Asians have a hard time of getting rid of their accent and speaking um, uh, English or any other language if they were born and raised in an Asian country. Well, I mean, they were being facetious. They did not really believe that Asians are aliens, but their language and their culture um, you know, we can look back through history was quite different and quite foreign to other cultures of the time and quite different from other languages. But I had to remind them that even that, uh, even though they don't, uh, you know, Asian languages don't have an alphabet per se, they don't have letters per se, letters and numbers like we do. You know, it's more of a uh, um, um, a pictographic type of of language where the symbols. I mean, you you got to learn thousands, hundreds of thousands. Of, you know, if you're gonna, you know, you write in in Chinese or Japanese, it's you know it, it, the, the figures uh, that you have to learn and know are are just they're vast. So, in that, and if you're not growing, if you don't grow up with it, 
um, it can be very difficult to learn. And the and especially if you're going to speak the language and speak it properly, especially Mandarin Chinese, the diction of it is so foreign to Western diction because, you know, well, in Western culture, Western languages, for instance, um, we when we ask a question properly, we often rise at the end of the sentence. Do we not? But. In Mandarin and other Asian languages, there is no rule for that kind of stuff. I mean, you could make a statement in, your, in the middle of, this, of, of the sentence and your, you know, your verbiage or diction can rise. And, and it could be a question and your diction can drop. And it, and it could be like a, if you're listening to it as a foreigner, it looks sometimes you think that their people are stopping and stuttering or, or you think they're repeating the same word over and over again. When in reality, if you're actually listening to it, they're not repeating the same word, although there are syllables that are that are the same, but they're put in different combinations to make a different word. So it sounds like that they're constantly repeating themselves, but they're really not. So that kind of thing can be difficult for somebody who's not used to that. Understood. However, they're not the most difficult language on the planet to learn. The most difficult language to learn on the planet, and I'm not the one who says this, but a lot of people who are in the know, who study languages, tell us that the most difficult language to learn on the planet is Icelandic. And a lot of people are shocked to learn that. Well, who wants to learn Icelandic? There's nobody that lives in Iceland, right? Well, I mean, it's about 350,000 people that live in the country of Iceland. Yes, it's a country. And I joke, I joke today, I said, that, yeah, the, in Iceland, the, the shortest word they have has 15 letters in it. Uh, you know, that's probably, I don't speak Icelandic, but that's probably not true. But if you were to look at words in you know, Icelandic, they tend to be quite prolific with letters. And that makes it very difficult for others to be able to read. As well as pronounce. I mean, it's kind of like having to constantly pronounce supercalifragilisticexpialidocious or abcadeca. You know, remember the, what Big Bird did in, in, in Sesame Street? Abcadeca suetatuas suetis. Basically, he, he pronounced the entire English alphabet as a single word. Well, that's everyday language for Icelanders, uh, basically. And that's something that is very difficult for other people to to understand. Now, why do I even bring that up? Well, Iceland is 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 from what I've said. I've never been there. I actually, I would like to go there. I'd like to give it a visit. Iceland is a very beautiful. Well, it's a country, but it's an island. Obviously, yes, it's very beautiful. All the pictures I've seen here, gore, you know, even the cities, gorgeous place. And I think in the last hundred years, they've had one. Uh, uh, cop shooting so, you know something ridiculous like that well it's only 350,000 of them so the cops can't go around shooting people uh, it might also be that their society is a little bit more civil towards one another and it might also be the fact that maybe um, you know Iceland is not exactly a, a free market type of government system or, or a demo free democratic republic like the United States but maybe it's because they have fewer rules and regulations on the books. So, you know, just jumping in your car and, and starting it isn't going to be reason for you to be fined or pulled over because you broke some sort of law, rule, or regulation. Did you know that in the state of New Hampshire, it is illegal for you to leave your car running? Now, you can have a remote starter, but if your key is in the ignition... It is illegal for you to get out of the vehicle with your key in the ignition. It's called unattended motor vehicle. And the fine start, I think, at 100 or $150 for that. And how do, I, how do I know? Because I had a police officer try to tag me with that one late night. And, you know, I, I went into a convenience store. Came, left. It was winter. Left my car running like many people do. Came right back out. I was the first one to leave the parking lot, and woo! I get pulled over. And he's and he looks at he comes in the window. Do you know why I pulled you over? I said, I have no idea. I just pulled out of the parking lot. 
I couldn't have been speeding. He said, well, you left your car running. I said, yeah, and? He goes, that's illegal to do in the state of New Hampshire. It's called unattended motor vehicle. And I looked at him and I said, you are really joking, right? What did I really get pulled over for? And he said, no, there is a statute. I'm like, that, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. You got cops, you guys do that. Everybody does it. How are you going to pull over? Look. And I looked back and I said, look, everybody over there, there's three other vehicles. They're all running. How are you? Are you going to call in backup? I was, I, I think I was actually being kind of rude to the, to the officer. But I said, that's, that's ridiculous. And he goes, yeah, hold, you know, just license and registration. And he came back. I'm just going to give you a warning this time. I said, that, that is really a law. He said, yes, sir, it is. I said, that is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Everybody does it. And yet, up until you get pulled over, probably nobody but the, those who pass the law even know it's a law. So there I am. Minding my own business, thinking I'm being a law-abiding citizen, and I'm breaking a law. A very expensive, finable law. I had no idea. Now, we always say that ignorance is no excuse for breaking the law. Well, if nobody knows about that kind of law, which is which hurts nobody, except, well, maybe somebody jumps in the car and steals it. And I think that's the reason why they can't. Well, we don't want people stealing your car. Well, that's my responsibility, isn't it? They like to say, well, no, because then we have to put cops out there and chase down your car. And that takes, uh, you know, time and effort and money. It puts the police officers in danger when they find it. Like, are you, this is ridiculous. But this is the type of, the, of society that we're building today where just about every single American from the d- time that you wake up, hell, you're probably breaking a law while you're sleeping. I don't know. Some place probably has snoring as being an illegal act. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. Then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on wash and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-616-8010. That's 1-800-616-8010. Again, 1-800-616-8010. Call now. Did you ever look at the stains in your coffee cup and then realize that's exactly what happens to your teeth? Power Swabs is the five-minute solution to get your teeth white without visiting the dentist. This is Ben Gordon with Power Swabs, and if your teeth are stained from coffee, tea, or smoking, all it takes is five minutes with Power Swabs. In five minutes, you'll see an average of two shades whiter teeth, and in seven days, six shades. It's clinically proven to whiten natural teeth as well as caps and veneers. The secret is a tooth detergent that was developed by Dr. Martin Ginniger that lifts stains off of your teeth. Best of all, there's no messy strips or trays that you have to leave in your mouth for an hour. Just swab your teeth for five minutes and you're done. To try Power Swabs risk-free, call 1-800-291-5140. That's 1-800-291-5140. I guarantee your bright white smile will have your friends talking about how great you look. Try it risk-free today. 1-800-291-5140. That's 1-800-291-5140. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15. 
$15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. I considered suicide so I wouldn't put my family through all the pain. Many of our warriors are returning home from the battlefield only to face a new war as they struggle with devastated injuries. At Wounded Warrior Project, we understand. We're there to help. Even though you think you're broken, you're not. It's the physical and the emotional healing that Wounded Warrior Project provides. With a gift of just $19 a month, you can join Wounded Warrior Project. You'll help provide critically needed programs and services that rebuild lives. Beautiful! <laughs> The ongoing needs of our wounded and their families will continue for many years to come. Now is the time to show your support. Call now or go online with your gift of just $19 a month and we'll send you this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. It made me feel that there's people out there that care about us. After this event, we can finally maybe start to heal as a family and move forward. We need your help. The families are hurting. For many of our wounded heroes, the greatest casualty is being forgotten. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Please call or go online right now. If you wish to give me a buzz while we're on the air live, and we're live here Monday through Friday, uh, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Time, we're still flirting with the idea of going three hours, but that won't happen for a little while yet, but we're we're still flirting with that idea, contemplating, if you will. Uh, Hopefully, it won't be against the rule of regulation somewhere. So, you know, we won't have people coming to my door knocking and, uh, Hey, did you know that you're violating FCC rule and regulation number five, six, seven, two, three, four, seven, nine, eight, six B and C as well as two, four, three, nine, seven, two, five, a, uh, dash four. You know, that's how they do. Regula- I mean, th- th- because there's so many of them, that's how you, you don't even, if you've never looked at a rule or a regulation or even a law and you think a law would be simple, uh, they're not, many of them are not, I mean, they go on and on and on and there's different paragraphs and sections and subsections and head, it, it's just redonkulous, which is why I'm here. Because you know you need to know know stuff like this, so you know how to go out there and 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 pressure your representatives and to elect certain representatives who are going to at least try to reduce some of this crap, if not reverse it. Simply, simply put, I mean, this is we're an overregulated. Some people say that we're you know Americans are overfed and overstimulated. I think we're overregulated. Quite frankly, we're, we're over-regulated by a lot. I mean, there's not a... You, know, you would think that there are just certain things that should be... You know, one, should either be you know common sense. Or two, it should be up to you. But wearing a seatbelt should be up to you. It might be common sense to wear it, but it should be up to you. 
And no government official should be running around telling you, well, you know, if you don't, uh, if you don't do, I, I know there are some people that believe in it, but those are the people that like to be able to tell you and me how to live our lives on a daily basis. It's kind of like New York City with Bloomberg. You know, well, but nobody should be able to drink more than 16 ounces of soda at once. Well, how are you going to stop, you know, well, well, you're just not going to be able to sell anything bigger than 16 ounces. Well, how is that going to stop people from drinking it? So instead of buying a 32-ounce soda, they'll just buy two 16 ounces. I mean, so you, you won't be able to, well, what he wanted is he didn't want you to be able to buy a big gulp. Now, I don't know. I can't, I can't drink 32 ounces of soda. I can't drink 32 ounces of anything usually all at once. So I, I wouldn't buy it. Oh, but there are some people that can, so, and they want to. But why would you be beholden or elect somebody? Now, think about this for a second. Why would you elect anybody who is going to prevent you from doing what you like to do? Now, forget the fact you might say, well, they're, 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 you know, they're, they're for limiting that person, my neighbor's freedom and power. I don't mind because I don't think my neighbor should be able to do what my neighbor's doing. Well, but at the same point, you're still electing that same official who's now turning on you and saying, you can't buy 32 ounce, a 32 ounce soda. You can't buy a big gulp. I like big gulps. Can't buy it. Well, I mean, it didn't, it didn't happen, but tr- they tried. So they wanted to do it. So they, they wanted to tell you that, you know, government, the government wanted to be in nanny state and tell you that you could not buy with your own money, the money that you worked for, you earned, that you could not buy a 32 ounce big gulp. It was going to be illegal to sell it to you. So you might say, well, you know, I'm not going to get hurt by it. No, but your local convenience store, you know, the one that you like to go to every single day could get fined and even thrown out of business or thrown in jail if they sold 32 ounce big gulps to you. Do you want somebody else being fined or going to jail because they gave you what you wanted of a legal product? You know, you can buy soda. Soda is not illegal. They were not proposing, at least this time, they were not proposing to make soda or any other sugary drink illegal. They were trying to limit how much you could buy at any one time. And it was, it was, it was a stupid way to do it. And, you know, just like they're trying, you know, for you young people out there, you know, you, you Gen Xers. Uh, all that, you millennials and things like that. Um, you know, there is this whole notion of trying to eliminate or reduce how you can get access to energy drinks. Believe it or not, there are people out there that you're supporting that support either limiting or banning Red Bull. How do how, you like that? And of course, now you've got camp, you know, campuses all across the country uh, that say that you cannot, ha- even if you are legally able to drink, you can't buy these energy alcoholic beverages like Sparks. But you're voting for these same people who are doing this to you. They're not doing it for you. They're doing it to They're They're saying, oh, we're just trying to protect you. And yet you're falling for this notion that, oh, it's got to be, you know, the Republicans are, are bad. The conservatives are bad. And all this time you're voting for these wonderful do-gooding liberals who are taking away your freedom on a, almost on a daily basis. Oh, no, you can't have sparks on college campuses anymore. But I, I'm 21. I can drink. No, nope, no. Nope. College rules. And in some places, there might even be laws in place or regulations in place that prevent you from buying an energy alcoholic beverage like Sparks. Now, I've actually had Sparks. I don't particularly like that. Yeah, they're okay. 
And I know, I, I know in some places, you know, well, there, there's the, uh, what, um, is it Jaeger bombs? Where it's Jaeger and Red Bull mix. I, I think that's it. You know, some, and, and there, some bars are saying, well, we have to stop serving them because, you know, we're being threatened by government. So you're not even, at some point, they're trying to make it illegal for you to buy a, a an alcoholic beverage with an energy drink component. Now, at some point, you know, they're, they're, because obviously the American people are not stupid, so they've already got the idea that energy drink and alcohol not only tastes good, but it makes you a very energetic, wide-awake drunk. And it, to, to a certain degree, energy drinks help the absorption of alcohol get into your system faster. And, and and depending on how much of the energy drink you have, it intensifies the alcohol alcoholic stupor, so you feel better. You, you you get a higher alcoholic high with energy drinks in you than without it. So they're going to say, well, it's illegal to buy that. Well, people aren't stupid now that you already know that it's possible to do that and, and you think it tastes good. You might like actually like the taste of it and you definitely like the feeling that you get from it. So you're just going to go and buy your alcoholic beverage. And you're going to go out and you're going to buy your Red Bull or any other energy drink and you're going to combine the two yourself. Well, there, then there's going to be people out there who want, who are going to want to make it illegal for you to do that. And if you think that that's not possible, consider this. You know how it's illegal for anyone to purchase alcohol if you're under the age of 21. And it's obviously it's illegal to sell or give anyone under the age of 21 alcoholic beverages. Yes. Everybody understood that. Okay, we're going to raise a you know legal drinking age from 18 to 21. No big deal. No, because, you know, the, the underagers are going to say, well, I'm, it's not going to stop me from getting alcohol. So then you know what they do? Since that isn't stopping young people, especially people, you know, students on college campuses or college campi all over the country, then they decided, well, you know what? Not only is it illegal for you to possess it, but we're going to expand that possession type of mentality or legality. And they call it internal possession. So if you if you've consumed an alcoholic beverage and you're under the age of 21, you will get arrested, you will have to go to court, and pay a hefty fine for internal possession. Now, I know in this state of New Hampshire, that's, that's a five or $600 fine for the first offense. Because they didn't keep you from getting the alcohol. They didn't catch you with the alcohol. You already drank it, so now it's in your system it's in your stomach it's in your bloodstream and so now they say well that's internal possession what and now you're going to get fined how much and then you're also going to have to go to these alcoholic you know uh, uh, alcohol awareness programs that cost a ridiculous amount of money and if you don't do it Either you're going to get fined or threatened with something uh, again. And if you're caught more than once in a certain period of time, well, you could be facing jail time in a county jail for drinking alcohol. But yet, you 18 to 21 year olds are still running around out there voting for these same people who want to criminalize you having alcohol in your system. Now, at some point, they're probably going to say, well, you know, uh, maybe the alcohol has run its course. But, you know, we're going to there is a school. I, I had the story the other day, yesterday. There is a school. Out, I do believe it's out in California. It's a public school. They want to randomly test their students for drug use. Randomly test. And not that you're you're taking a pill now or you're smoking pot now. How they want to do the test, not a blood test. They want to take a hair sample. Well, we know that there are, there are many 
drugs, legal and illegal, that will turn up in a hair sample. And so if you are if you are one of those students that is randomly tested and your hair pops you positive, well, they're going to want to ban you from extracurricular activities. So that means sports or chess club or what have you. Uh, you're also you're also then going to be subjected to going to, you know, these anti drug sessions, counseling. Se- Who knows how much that's going to cost you or your parents, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mr. and Mrs. Jones, this is the high school calling. Yes, last week we randomly tested your son, Johnny, and we took a little bit of his hair and we tested it for drugs, and it showed positive for marijuana. And not only marijuana, but it showed positive for alcohol use. So in order for Johnny to come, Johnny is now banned from fall sports. So I know he's a football star looking for scholarships, but he can't play this season. And in order for him to play basketball or baseball or soccer or lacrosse or track, you know, in the winter and spring, he's going to have to complete an anti-drug course. Now, this course is given, you know, once every week for the next six weeks. Now, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, there is a cost to this. And you are going to have to pay the cost of this for little Johnny. The cost is $1,200 and it must be paid up front. Now, again, if Johnny does not complete this class, this six week long course, he cannot play anymore or participate in any extracurricular activities until he, pa- until he goes to this course. And completes it successfully. Now, this will stay on the books for the rest of the time that he's in school. So if he doesn't complete this course, and we understand he's a sophomore, he will not be able to play sports his junior or senior year until he completes this course. And again, currently the course is $1,200. And because he's already tested positive in six months, we will test Johnny again. And if Johnny comes up positive again in six months, you are going to have to repeat this course. Folks, that's happening out in California right now. And yet, you are continuing to vote for these people who are doing that to you. And I can't understand it. You're voting for people who continually keep you, if you're, if you're an African American or a Latino or, or, or even a, a white person who's in, locked in poverty in the inner city or maybe some countryside, you're still voting for people who are locking you into that poverty. And yet you want to say, and this is usually a rhino or a liberal Democrat who's doing this to you. And yet you want to go out there on a daily basis and, comp- and constantly lament and argue and, 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 and badmouth conservatives for being the bad guy. When all we're saying is, look, get government off our back. Let us take care of ourselves. And you're calling that bad for the economy. That's evil. That's race. Oh, it's racist for, uh, you know, for con- conservatives to believe that you as a black person have the ability to be the master of your own destiny of your own life. Oh, that's somehow that's racist. So you will go out and you will continually vote for the same person that will implement laws, rules, and regulations that you don't like. Oh, wait a minute. You know, I just had a conversation today with a black man on the air. I was giving an interview, uh, Rachel Hammer's show. And they had a black man by the name of Richard who decided to call in and try to take me on. No, they asked me, he said, do you want to, you know, we have this guy, he's a, you know, he calls the show quite a bit. He's a, he's a liberal. Do you want to, do you want, he wants to speak to you directly because he doesn't like what you're saying. Do you want to talk to him? I'm like, oh yeah. I'm like the, the Kool-Aid guy. Oh yeah. Put him through. We did. They did. 
And of course, you know, he, he proceeded to vomit the same stupid PowerPoints that they get from the Democratic Party. And yet, when you actually try to get him to see reality and ask him to explain the reality of it, he can't, all he can do is, you know, well, you're, you're a sellout. They can't answer. Look, I gave him the opportunity. I gave him the full opportunity to, to, to get what he wanted to say out. And then the host of the show, Rachel Hammer, she said, well, do you care to respond to him, Rod? That's when I unloaded. And he couldn't come back with anything. So he was like stuttering. and blah, uh, uh, uh. Well, you know what? If you're going to do that, I'm going to keep hammering you. Well, can I get my point across? No, because you have no point. Your point is, is you're complaining about something that you're saying that the Republicans are doing, but it's not the Republicans, it's not the conservatives, it's your own Democrat party that you keep electing. Hey, how about this one? You know, you, you claim that the uh, Republicans only want to keep blacks down. Okay, what have the Democrats and, and Obama done in the last six and a half years for blacks? Nothing. They're worse off today, and these are government stats. They're worse off today than they were under Bush. And there are a lot of blacks who realize that, and they're still scratching their heads, and they don't know what to do. Well, I can tell you what to do if you're black. You don't vote for them anymore. You stop it. But they're out there like, well, I don't, but the Republicans are supposed to be the racist ones and the ones that don't want to help us, and we're not any, we're worse off now than we were back under Bush. Well, it's got to be Bush's fault. Well, no, 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 it's not. So you will still, and, and this is true of even Republicans a lot of times, you will continue to vote for somebody like Bonnier and uh, McConnell and, and, and other rhinos. Uh, you know, we, we'll complain about what the government's doing, but yet and still, we, you know, well, well, Bonnier, he can't, you know, why, why is Bonnier uh, the, the House Speaker? Well, because the people in Ohio who also complain about Bonnier keep reelecting him to the House. That's why. And yet they want to run around and and complain about it. Well, you keep electing the same people that you hate. There's no such thing as, you know, the devil you know is better than the devil you don't know. Uh, No, not really, because the, the devil that we do know is really, really, really bad. And yes, it can get worse if you go out and elect a worse devil like Obama, of course. But if you go and elect true conservatives who believe in a constitution and believe that you can do better for yourself than the government can do for you, well, that's not a that's not a devil. That's that's almost angelic. So you don't need to have government then if you can do for yourself. So the point is, you got to stop voting for and electing these people who are doing the things that you later lament. And that you hate. If you don't like, if you don't like government overregulation, if you don't like rules, if you don't like uh, too many laws in the books, then stop voting for people who constantly want to put a new law, a new rule, or regulation on the books that's going to affect you in a negative way. And they almost always do. Well, you know what? We need this new law, and they'll tell you. And you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Until you get ensnared by it. Well, and then you'll say, well, that's not what we thought. Let me give you a prime example. Obamacare. You know, we, we constantly hear, and he tried to pull this today on the Rachel Hammer show. We, oh, yeah, yeah, the overwhelming people enjoy Obamacare. No. Poll after poll after poll, including liberal poll like CNN and ABC and MSNBC mess, they get polls after, they stop doing these polls because the polls are getting worse that more and more and more and more Americans do not want Obamacare. They do not like Obamacare. They want Obamacare repealed. Period. They don't want to repeal and replace. They just want to repeal. And yet we have all these wonderful Republicans running around out there. And, 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 and I'm going to mention one, even Rubio. Well, we need to repeal and replace. No, Senator, we don't need to replace. We need to repeal and get the government out of our health care. That's what we need to do. We don't need to replace it with something else. But yeah, you know, we're going to run around and elect all these people that, that, that did something that we did not like. That did something that we have come to hate. 
and loathe. And that's for a lot of you liberal Democrats. You will continue continually out there in California, reelect Nancy Pelosi, and she was the one of the biggest culprits of jamming down Obama Obamacare down our throats. And even people out in California, a lot of liberals don't like Obamacare. But who are they going to vote for? Nancy Pelosi. Why? I just don't, I don't, I'm trying to understand it. And I, I listen to the reasoning that, that a lot of pundits give for people following the same, you know, political party mantra. But when you get, when you actually get down to it and you get down in the gutter and you're actually living your daily life and this is all affecting your daily life, it's affecting your wallet, it's a, you know, affecting your family, it's affecting your kids and how you raise your kids and how they grow up and if your kids are going to have a better life than you. And yet, somehow sticking to that party line, you know, voting Democrat or voting Rhino is more important then what they're doing to you and your family. I don't understand that. I don't understand how you go into the, into a voting booth and say, yeah, I don't, I don't like John Bonnier. Oh, let's see. We got, we got John Bonnier, the rhino and his, his democratic counterpart. Oh, and over here, we've got this wonderful conservative. I'm going to vote for Bonnier. I, I, I don't get Nancy Pelosi. She helped, you know, pass Obamacare. We hate Obamacare. Obamacare is costing me a lot of money because now my health care is through the cost are through the roof. Um, let's see, who am I going to vote for? Oh, Nancy Pelosi. I, I don't understand it. I don't get it. Look, if somebody's doing something to me that I don't like, that's an elected official. I'm looking for somebody to replace them. I'm not looking to. I, I'm not. It's like they can't wait to get back in that voting booth. And this is why Clinton is so still so high. She, you know what, Hillary Clinton should be registering in the negative percentile. There is no possible way that she should even be even close to being uh, top of the, of the Democratic uh, nominee pile right now. That, absolutely none. But the only reason that people are supporting her is, well, she's a woman and she's a Democrat. We've got to stay with the Democrat Party. Have some Democratic fun. And she's out there telling you, you know what? We need more regulation out there. We need more rules. We need more laws. Because y'all just don't know how to live your lives right. And that affects you in a terrible way and makes things more expensive for you and your family. Yet you'll still vote for them? The leader in talk radio on the internet, right here on K98talk.com. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. Then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on wash and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-513-6154. That's 1-800-513-6154. Again, 1-800-513-6154. Call now. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 
dollars a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than three dollars a pill. Call one eight hundred five one six seventy six zero two today and save up to five hundred dollars and get forty pills for just ninety nine dollars. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at one eight hundred five one six seventy six zero two to take your call right now. Call one eight hundred five one six seventy six zero two. That's one eight hundred five one six seventy six zero two. Again, one eight hundred five one six. 7602. In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. All right, folks, this is Rick Robinson with you. I want to tell you about some friends of mine from a company called Security Enforcement Specialists. When I ran my security agency for 12 years, I worked with one of these partners on a daily basis. He's been involved in this agency now, and with his other partner, they do have over 30 years of experience in the private security industry. If you own a business and you need someone to keep you or your customers or residents safe, then I highly recommend contacting Security Enforcement Specialists today. Give them a call at 405-703-1796. Again, that's 405-703-1796. Again, tell them Rick from K98 Talk sent you. Like I said, if you need the help, they are here for you, so make sure that you uh, go look them up, check them out, and see what they can do. Wrong way! Welcome to the Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. They got up to like $68,000. My heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Tax Shield A plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than ten thousand dollars to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose. U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Call eight hundred four seven one thirty two eighty seven. U.S. Tax Shield. Boo raw. Yes. <laughs> 800-471-3287. 800-471-3287. The Internet will never be the same. You're listening to K98talk.com. Wow. Good God, y'all. What is it good for? Absolutely. Let's get started Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. Coming to you live from my bunkerized home studio 
somewhere within the great granite state of New Hampshire, where the state motto is still live free or die. It is Thursday, Thursday, August the 20th, in the year of our Lord, 2015, as we trounce on through uh, our two hour number two already. The fastest two hours on internet, internet talk radio is right here on the Rod Eccles show. And if you want to participate by calling me live, the number is 603, toll free, of course, 603-835-3224. Again, that number is 603-835-3224. And, uh, I'm glad that you are here listening. No, I am getting wonderful feedback. Uh, from a lot of my syndicated affiliates, uh, letting me know that I, that, that the numbers that, uh, of people that are listening, uh, both live and, and on a replay are continually going up. That's a good thing. I, I'm glad I'm, you know, I'm, I'm resonating, uh, resonating with, with, with people across this wonderful, uh, country of ours that is, it, you know, I, I just, I'm only doing my part because I happen to love this country. I also happen to, you know, I, I got kind of used to uh, growing up with, with freedom, uh, as it were, you know, what little freedom we may have left. I, I kind of like it. I kind of like, you know, having, um, uh, you know, I, I haven't always been successful, you know, in, in my life. You know, there's ups and downs. Every everybody probably has that. Even Donald Trump. But I like having the ability to be able to decide on what I want to do and make a go for it. You know, um, uh, one of the things that I, um, my as as most of you know that my my father recently passed away at the age of seventy five, a twenty one year veteran of the United States Air Force. And once again, I would like to say thank you to so many of you out there who have offered your prayers and your condolences. Believe me, it was, it was amazing. It touched me. Uh, it touched my family. Uh, because there were, there were people that, um, that sent flowers and notices uh, that my mother didn't recognize and I had to explain who they were from and and she looked at me and said wow and now now you have to understand why that that means more to me than you can than you the audience can possibly know because my mother and my father, they, they know exactly that, uh, what I do. They know I, I, I did this show. I do this show. And they both asked me one time, you know, they said, why do you bother? Why do you, why do you want to go and fight with those people? I can't, you know, especially my mother. I can't believe that, you know, you're, you're out there fighting with those people again. Because she remembers that I was rather vocal even in high school. Now, I think I've relayed that story before about, um, about what happened in high school. And, you know, there was a, a, a year that we didn't have fall sports because they couldn't pass the budget, school budget, and it went in the, into an uh, austerity budget type of thing, which means all extracurricular activities got booted. Uh, and, and we were having, they were having meetings, and these meetings kept getting bigger and bigger until the, uh, one of the meetings they had was in, actually in the high school auditorium uh, for a school meeting. And um, you know, my mother remembered me going to that and actually speak and making the news, actually, being on the news for speaking my mind, which was really kind of weird. Uh, I didn't expect that. But my, my mother, just, she, she just says, well, I, I can't believe you're still fighting with these people. M meaning, you know, politicians at various levels, be, be it at the, at, at the, the school district level or the, or the state level or, or, or the federal level, you know, she didn't under, she didn't really understand. And, and, and no, you know, again, I just, I just happened to tell her and my father because, you know, Hey, I didn't enter the military, but this is my way of protecting what my father fought to protect. No, they didn't. They didn't argue with me about it. They didn't try to talk me out of it. They just had a hard time understanding. Now, 
My father eventually came to to recognize and understand. And I got to tell you, my mother didn't come around and understand until my father's funeral. And she looked at me after the funeral and said, there are a lot of people that care about you. I said, yeah, evidently there are. And she said something else, too, because, uh, you know, there were the picture of all the kids and there are not a lot of pictures of me. I'm kind of camera shy. I know, you know, when I was like 17, 18, 19 years old, I was attempted to be a model and an actor. Uh, Obviously, that didn't go well. I did a few things at a couple of commercials at a couple of uh, model spreads. One of the model I did. I was a model for a catalog. Uh, Unfortunately, um, I, I, I don't think that catalog exists. It was never online, thankfully. Uh, but it, I don't think it, it, I don't think anybody has a if somebody has a copy of of that old catalog destroy it. But the I was a model I was the male model for a catalog. Uh, there was one male model, one female model, and I was the model for a resurgence of a company that that um, that tried to bring back sixties tie dye. And in one particular <laughs> picture, uh, I was wearing head-to-toe tie-dye. Uh, the bandana was tie-dyed. The long-sleeve t-shirt was tie-dyed. The pants were tie-dyed. The shoes were tie-dyed. I look like Jimi Hendrix on crack. But, <laughs> so there are, other than that kind of, there are not a lot of pictures of me out there. So one of the pictures that, that my sister actually put together for all the, all the siblings, uh, at the, at the funeral, I uh, guess, you know, you have pictures of, of, of the family at, at show at the funeral. One of the pictures that she chose is actually the official Rod Eccles show picture. My mother didn't know that. But of the three photos that were there, my mother said, you know what? I really like that picture, that photo of you. I said, well, you know, that's the photo that everybody sees. And she's like, well, that's my favorite picture of you. So that means a lot to me as well. Now, I have a very close, tight-knit family, and I... And, and I understand that a lot of families across the country do not have that that same type of closeness. But I also understand there are a lot of con- uh, uh, families in this country that do understand and have that tight-knit closeness. And that's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing. But when you are that close to the members of your family and you guys are that tight... The loss through death makes it hurt that much more. But people out there, when I, when, when you have people like, like me that do stuff like this and you have friends out there that see that and understand that they respond to that in kind. And that's exactly what happened during the whole time this past summer that I, that, that my father's health was failing and I was back and forth uh, trying to do this and, and trying to be be there because I wanted to be there. I needed to be there. My mother wanted me there. My father wanted me there. Um, it, it, it was tough. But the core, the core listeners, the core fans, if you will, of this program, they hung in there. And you guys, I got to tell you, are amazing. And that just goes to show... What America and what a, and, and who Americans really are. And that proves to me that I need to keep doing this. This is something because Americans are worth fighting for. This country is worth fighting for. Because of your reaction to my family troubles this past summer, it has convinced me more than ever 
that this country and the people of this country are worth fighting for, are worth sacrificing for. And let me tell you, our military members, our military men and women, they already knew that which is why they do what they do on a daily basis, volunteer on a daily basis to do what they do. There is no conscription at all in the military. Uh, Those people do what they do because they want to. That touches me as well. Uh, You can't ask for more than that. You know, you can't ask for more than, than the love and support of your, of your family of your friends and of your fans. And you can't, you just can't, you can't ask for more than that. And this is why I'm going to continue doing what I do. Not, not only because I like it. Yeah. I've come to realize and admit I like it. I like doing it. But more importantly, I recognize that it's something that needs to be done and it's my way of fighting for you and our country and future generations who will occupy this country. That's why I do it. And, and, and to get the blessing of my parents and have them understand it and get it Oh, that's the icing on the cake. That is the icing on the cake. Which is why you're not going to ever be able to shut me up. Never. I'm going to have to be six feet under before I'm silent. And even then, because I'm writing books and I have this program, my voice is going to continue. So you will never, ever shut me up. Thank you for listening on all the various networks that you might be listening to this program. Uh, Whether it be off the RodEckles.net website, over on the Rod Eccles Spreaker channel. Uh, You can also catch... Um, catch me on various, uh, what are we up to? Like 12, 13? I, I, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure, but you know, you can catch me on K98 talk, pundit press radio. We are America war radio, SHR media, freedom in America radio. Uh, you can catch old clips, old programs, e- even new ones. I, I, uh, there are a couple of, uh, networks that, that take the show live and uh, over on Blog Talk Radio, Leading Edge Radio Network, Nightside Radio, um, Spreaker, over on Vigilant Liberty Radio Network, uh, Veterans Today Network, World Integrity News Network, and um, uh, there there is a a new one called Roar R O A R Roar Network. Uh, and I think if if I missed your network and you're listening, I do apologize because that means that you were recently added, and I'm just getting familiar with you and um so all those networks you know you can uh, you can catch them i guess i'm on i'm on seven days a week now you will find me somewhere uh, not live obviously because i don't do a live show saturday or sunday but you you can catch me seven days a week and to me that well i'm not going to say it's impressive but it i'm impressed I, you know, other people may not be so impressed. I'm impressed. I, I never dreamed that this would ever take off like this and, and get to the point where it is. So, so, and this is only due to one factor that people are listening. Because if they weren't listening to those other networks that I'm on, they would drop me. But people are listening. Like, like you know, you're listening. That's, that's a good thing. And I thank you for that. And that, well, I, it means that I am hitting the right notes, hitting the right chords, and that people understand what, even people who may not like what I say all the time, well, too bad for them. I I always say, if you don't like what I say, you'll get over it. 
uh, <laughs> they, they, you really, you, well, you will. Um, but my goal isn't for you to get over it. My goal is for you to actually start thinking logically, which means that you'll automatically agree with me on the macro, on the, on the big picture. Yeah, well, we'll you know, we, we still may uh, disagree and we may even disagree vehemently on the, on the, on the, on the minute details of how to achieve the big picture. Uh, and that's okay. Those are, those are the kind of arguments and conversations and debates that I'd, I'd love to have. How best to achieve the big picture. Well, I, I do like having the debates on people who do not agree with our big picture, but I would rather have the debate on, on, on how to achieve the big picture. Than trying to convince people that you know the, the way our found our founders had it is the right. Really, you know that's unbelievable. You're born in a country where you you have the ability to to make your life what you want it, and there are people that that want to change that. I don't. I don't. For the life of me, I just can't understand it. I know I try and I try and I just can't understand how somebody wants somebody else to dictate to them how they live their life on a on a daily basis. I don't I don't get it. I I just don't understand it. When you have the ability to, to you know yeah I know some people are afraid of failure you're going to make mistakes. Yeah, well, you know, I'm you know, I don't bat a thousand. Obviously, I've made plenty of mistakes and will continue to make mistakes. I'm only human. But I'd rather those mistakes be mine than my government. Because I mean, if the government makes a mistake on your life, then, well, it could actually, well, I mean, if you make a mistake in your life, it could kill you, literally. And if the government makes a mistake in your life, it could kill you. But if you make the mistake that is threatening your life, you can quickly change it. But if the government's making that mistake that can threaten your life... Well, you have to go through all kinds of bureaucratic red tape and nightmare in order to change it. And by the time it gets changed, you could already be dead. You see the difference? I'm just, you know, I, I just don't, I don't, I don't. And look, people try to get into this country because they want to be able to experience that. They want to be able to have control of their own future, their own destiny, if you will. And they, they want to be able to make their own mistakes uh, you know, on their own, in their, you know, their, on their own accord, in their own time. And they want to be able to make the, the, the adjustments that they, that they need to make when they want to make them and when they can make them, not when the government says, okay, we'll change it for you. People, I mean, why else? I mean, I want people, look, you lefties have got to understand something. You know, as much as you may hate this country. And, it's, and I find it amazing that you will defend illegal immigrants here, illegal aliens here. You will, def, you know, you will go up up one side and down the other side of a, of a Republican or or a conservative or a constitutionalist about illegal immigration and how they need to stay and blah. But at the same time, you're talking about how terrible and how bad this country is. Well, if this country was so bad that you need to fundamentally change it. Why the hell do we have over 11 million illegals here and growing daily? You're not making any sense. On the one hand, you're talking, oh, this country oh, this is terrible. You know, the rich people run everything and this is just terrible here. Billionaires and millionaires run everything and they have everything and, and, and the Republicans are evil and blah, blah. This is terrible. We just got to fundamentally change everything. Yet yeah, we have people risking their lives to get here, literally risking their lives to get here. So how can it be as bad as liberals say when everybody still wants to come here? And not only do they want to come here, you want to make sure that they get here any by any means possible, including illegally. And if they get here illegally, you want them to be able, not only do you want them to be able to stay for some reason, uh, and you say it has nothing to do with the vote, but for some reason, you want them to have fast track path to full citizenship. Well, why would you want more people to be citizens of a country that you hate and say is so bad? 
Can you can any liberal answer that? If this country is so bad in your eyes, why would you want 11 million people to suddenly become citizens of a country that is so bad? Uh, do, do you want to share the misery? Is that it? Because that's the only logical explanation. You know, misery loves company. Uh, so you want to, I, I know they're saying, well, no, that's not true. We want people to have opportunity. Well, opportunity for what? You say there is no opportunity. You keep telling us there there is no opportunity. You know, we get we get, we get the uh, black activists, you know, Jesse Jackson and, and, and Al Sharpton and the like. Oh, there's no opportunity here. No blacks are, you know, uh, African Americans. You know, we, we're in, we're destitute. And, but hey, you want to still bring in more people? I know that there are, you know, that there are a lot of blacks that that do not want. Ill, they don't want legals here because they're taking the jobs from African American citizens. You know, jobs that they want because they don't have any. But yet, you know. You liberals are out there say, keep saying, well, you know, they should have the opportunity to come here. Well, why should they have the opportunity to come to a country that's worse than that you're claiming is worse than the country they came from? This country's terrible. Remember? That's what you say. Americans are awful. We're evil. We're greedy. We're, we're you know, we're overfed. We're over rich. We have too much. We use consume too much of the world's energy. It's not fair. Um, you know that that we that we have such a powerful military, and it's not fair uh, that that we have all this opportunity that other countries don't. It's just not fair. We're terrible. We need to fundamentally change everything. But then you go, you run out, and you say, as soon as you say how bad America is, you say, well, we've got to let these eleven million plus illegals stay because they they want the opportunity. Opportunity for what? Opportunity for destitution opportunity to to share in the misery of of living in such a bad country obviously no because you think that this place this country that you hate so much has more opportunity than the countries that those people are coming from because i also notice that none of you liberals who think that this country is so bad really want to go live in mexico or any other place that these that the illegal immigrants are coming from so which is it is the united states so bad or it's so good, it can't be both. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. Then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on wash and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-616-8010. That's 1-800-616-8010. Again, 1-800-616-8010. Call now. Did you ever look at the stains in your coffee cup and then realize that's exactly what happens to your teeth? Power Swabs is the five-minute solution to get your teeth white without visiting the dentist. This is Ben Gordon with Power Swabs, and if your teeth are stained from coffee, tea, or smoking, all it takes is five minutes with Power Swabs. In five minutes, you'll see an average of two shades whiter teeth, and in seven days, six shades. It's clinically proven to whiten natural teeth as well as caps and veneers. The secret is a tooth detergent that was developed by Dr. Martin Ginniger that lifts stains off of your teeth. Best of all, there's no messy strips or trays that you have to leave in your mouth for an hour. Just swab your teeth for five minutes and you're done. To try Power Swabs risk-free, call 1-800-291-5140. That's 1-800-291-5140. I guarantee your bright white smile will have your friends talking about how great you look. Try it risk-free today. 1-800-291-5140. That's 1-800-291-5140. 
Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15. $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. I considered suicide so I wouldn't put my family through all the pain. Many of our warriors are returning home from the battlefield only to face a new war as they struggle with devastated injuries. At Wounded Warrior Project, we understand. We're there to help. Even though you think you're broken, you're not. It's the physical and the emotional healing that Wounded Warrior Project provides. With a gift of just $19 a month, you can join Wounded Warrior Project. You'll help provide critically needed programs and services that rebuild lives. Beautiful. Woo! There you go, buddy. The ongoing needs of our wounded and their families will continue for many years to come. Now is the time to show your support. Call now or go online with your gift of just $19 a month and we'll send you this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. It made me feel that there's people out there that care about us. After this event, we can finally maybe start to heal as a family and move forward. We need your help. The families are hurting. For many of our wounded heroes, the greatest casualty is being forgotten. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Please call or go online right now. You know, um, Rand Paul has said something that um, is absolutely true. Rand Paul says it only takes one Republican to be disruptive and change everything. Now, I don't think Rand knows how truthful that statement is. Because obviously, you know, he's running for president, excuse me, so he thinks he's a disruptive one. He's the one Republican uh, to be disruptive. The, the, the point is, it's not him. Even though his statement is absolutely, absolutely 150% accurate and true, uh, who he thinks that statement is about is 150% false. Because the one Republican who has been disruptive and is changing everything is Donald Trump. And I know some people are thinking, well, geez, there you go again, talking about Trump. That means you're going to endorse him. You're behind Trump. You're a Trump guy, aren't you? You're a Trumpite. Uh, No, I'm not. I bring that up simply because uh, Trump is out there. uh, Look, he's talking about stuff and forcing the debate on a lot of different topics. And he's he's doing it in such a way where even the lamestream media now has to engage him on it. He's changed everything. And one of the hot topics that Trump is not letting go of because they 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 tried to browbeat him like what well, you would even do that and you do this as if to say what are you crazy? On, on the notion of immigration, illegal immigration, Trump is not backing off of this stuff. You know, hey, hey, look, 
if you if you're here illegally, we gotta get we gotta catch you and send you home. Well, what about the kids? Well, the parents they gotta they gotta be with their parents. Parents illegal, send them home. You do you do that? Well, yeah. Well, then they can get in line, and they could and they can come back legally. But you'd send them, you 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 deport them. Wait, the, the lamestream media, they're, they're beside, they can't believe that somebody would actually say it. They know that, that many Republicans believe it, but they just, they can't believe that they would actually say it on the air and not back down, not apologize for it. No, they got to go. And, and now we're starting to have this debate about the 14th Amendment. I got to tell you, we would not be having this debate about Ill- illegal immigration and the 14th Amendment if it were not for Donald Trump. Rand Paul is not the one who's, who's fostering this, this, uh, this discussion. It's Donald Trump. Donald Trump is the disruptive Republican that Rand Paul is talking about. I got, you, look, got to be honest about it. Whether you like the Donald or not is irrelevant. He's the one that's changing and disrupting everything. I mean, he's he's disrupt he's disrupted the left. I mean, if Hillary's not talking and trying to defend about about Hillary Gate, uh, email gate, she's she's trying to deflect Donald Trump attacking her. And it he's changed everything this early in the in, in the whole system. Now, normally, you know, can you know, normally Republicans, or uh, you know, even though Democrats constantly atta- attack Republicans, normally Republicans are tearing each other apart at this particular point, so they can, you know, build the build themselves up and, and win the primaries, right? Uh, no, this time around, you got a lot of Republican candidates, especially the ones that are that are rising or in the top echelon part, you know, the top ten, uh, or, or are breaking into the top ten. Uh, they're talking about. What Donald is talking about, they're not, you know, people who are attacking Trump like Rick Perry, they, you know, who are they now? They've fallen by the wayside. So really, Republican candidates who are on the attack of other Republican candidates, they're not faring as well, including Scott Walker, who's changed his tune, by the way, and is now talking about what Donald is talking about, not really attacking Donald, but attacking Hillary. And so now you've got a lot of Republican candidates attacking the Democrats this early on because Donald already led the way. And he's talking about real issues that 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 concern that are of concern to the American people and the voters of this country. And he's forcing the others to do it. He's forcing it so much that not only are the other Republican candidates also talking about these these issues. But he's got the lamestream media talking about these issues, and they're giving him the microphone, and he's not apologizing or backing away. You cannot tell me that Donald Trump is the single most disruptive candidate that this country has seen since Ronald Reagan. You can't tell me that, 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 that would not be true. I would I would even argue that Don, you know even though Donald Trump has not been nominated or elected, I would argue that Donald Trump right now this election season has has been already more disruptive than even Ronald Reagan was. That is saying a lot. And it's disruptive in a good way, a very very, very good way. Now, look, again, I don't care if, if Donald is your guy or not, if you're supporting him or not. The point is, is that even if you are supporting somebody else right now, he is most likely forcing your candidate of choice to talk about the real issues and to, to try to differentiate themselves from the Democrats. Mainly Hillary, and try, look, I'm I'm just waiting for the Donald to start laying into uh, um, Bernie Sanders. I I can't wait for him to start tearing into Bernie Sanders because you're talking about the socialist who claims he doesn't like millionaires and billionaires, and who isn't doesn't seem to be uh, taking money from. Uh, the wealthy, and he's still doing quite well in the polls for on the Democrat side and garnering large crowds. So it's got you know it, it's the it's the 
it's the anti-establishment versus the anti-establishment. Because even though Donald Trump is a real estate magnate and a billionaire in his own right, he's not the Republican establishment. He's not. So you've got anti-establishment versus anti-establishment. And I just can't wait until Trump rips into Sanders. No, he's he's already, he's already hurt, and you won't get Democrats to admit it, but Trump has already hurt Hillary. In fact, there are polls out there that are now showing that if the election were today, in many states, Trump would win. He'd beat Hillary. And as a matter of fact, there is a, um, um, you know, in eight different, uh, well, Hillary now is doing so bad that she's actually trailing um, eight GOP hopefuls, including, including, and and I guess there was a poll that shows that uh, this one particular GOP candidate would beat Hillary the most right now, and that is Dr. Ben Carson. I, surprise to me too, yeah. But you know, yeah, and, and and look, I I fully understand polls, and I, I I'm not I I don't really believe in polls all that much. But we're talking eight polls, and some of them are conservative leaning, and and most of them are are liberal leaning, like ABC and MSNBC. Uh, they're showing eight GOP contenders beating Hillary, including Trump and Carson. That's saying a lot, and you have to understand. What Trump is doing and saying. Now, if Trump is being that bold, that brash, and he's starting to come out with details about his different plans, and people are still supporting him, that says a lot. And you're finding that Dr. Carson has found his voice, thank God. And, and he's, been asked, he's being asked questions, and he's hitting the, the answers or, are knocking the questions out of the park. Uh, he is blasting the left, and he's blasting the liberal media for 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 doing these, uh, saying and promoting these stupid, inane, liberalistic ideas. Well, Doctor Carson, how about this and this? You know, you're a black guy, Mister Carson. What what about the? Yeah, and he's just he's what? Are you crazy? He's basically telling him, "What are you crazy?" But he's got that that very wonderful com. Now he is the opposite of me. I will give Dr. Carson the credit on that. He's the opposite of me. When when he gets these ridiculous questions like this, he's got that same very calm, fatherly response and attitude. But he still knocks it out of the park. Now, me, that would just sort of ignite my ire. Like every time I debate a liberal, I, my voice, you know, oct- octaves go up because that's just me. But he's doing he's doing it he's doing the same thing I'm doing, but with a lower tone of voice, and it's a beautiful thing. I I praise Dr. Carson because I got to tell you I didn't think he had a chance, and now I'm thinking, well, not only does he have a chance, but this guy's already polling to be able to beat Hillary. And if he can beat Hillary. Uh, even if he's not the GOP nomination uh, nominee, maybe he's a vice presidential candidate. I'm t- I'm looking at Dr. Carson in a whole different way right now. I'm t- and that's what this process is supposed to do, by the way, which is why I cannot endorse any one particular candidate because this process is is going to cause you to want to support somebody different, probably on a daily or a monthly basis. And yet there are going to be, there might be a candidate out there like me with Dr. Carson that you once thought has absolutely no chance, but all of a sudden he's shooting up in the polls and the polls are saying, well, yeah, he's got a shot against uh, any, anybody on the Democratic side. And you're thinking, oh, well, okay, let's see what, what more he has to say. But that wouldn't be happening if it weren't for the Donald. I'm telling you, because all, all you would have at the top of the, at, at the top of the heap right now would be, Jeb Bush, Scott Walker, Marco Rubio, and Ted Cruz. That would be it. Those would be your four. I'm telling you, those would be your four candidates that you'd have to choose from right now. If it were not for Donald Trump. Because they're the most practiced, most rehearsed, most polished politicians on the GOP side right now. 
I know people, well, what about Santorum and Perry? Yeah, but they would have been dropping out long ago. Uh, yeah, well, uh, you, you can never really count out Santorum because Santorum was behind a lot in the early days uh, of of 2012. But it, he actually won a few primaries, if I do recall, back in 12. Uh, so it, it, you can't rule out Santorum. I, I, I know I you, you really can't. But at the same time, now you're looking at a Fiorina, looking at Cruz. Uh, you're looking at uh, uh, um, you know Carson, looking at Trump, and 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 big names like Bush, even Rubio, not doing so well. Even even you know the Golden Boy, Scott Walker, not doing so well. The other Golden Boy, uh, Kasich, not doing so well. Now, it doesn't mean that they can't, none of the, none of the ones I just mentioned can't, you know, have a reversal of fortune. And, and again, don't rule out Scott Walker. Let's face it, this is the guy that, that beat the liberals at their own game and, and won three elections in four years. So, you, look, he knows what, he knows how to win. But you have to understand, he's not going to win by being polished and rehearsed. And I think he gets that now. This whole this whole thing that, that Rand is, is talking about being disruptive, it's taken the professional politicians off their game on both sides of the political aisle. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a absolutely gorgeous thing. Now, can it stay this way? I don't know how long this is going to last throughout the, maybe it'll last the entire prime. I hope it lasts the entire primary season. And I hope it continues straight on through the actual campaign for the election of new, uh, of once the, once the, uh, the, the nominees are known. I hope it continue. I hope the Republicans continue to be disruptive and just take the, because look, look, this is another uh, 2016 is not only an opportunity for the conservatives to take the White House, it is also an opportunity for the conservatives to take more control of the House and Senate. And, uh, I'm, you know, it's, it's the truth. They have that opportunity. We have the opportunity. We have the opportunity to actually reverse, have a reversal of fortune of the direction of this country right now. I, I, it is, it is, look, look under, fully understand me on this. This 2016 election is an election for the conservatives to lose. The Democrats aren't going to win a damn thing. The only thing that can happen is if conservatives lose it. Because I'm telling you right now, we've got it in the bag. And we've got four or five, well, as many as eight candidates right now that can take it all the way. So this is an election all across the board for conservatives to lose. I'm telling you, the Democrats can't look. You've got Democrats who are now it never would have, you know, if this were two years ago, a year ago, wouldn't even have thought to go against Barack Obama. Now you've got some major Democrats like Chuck Schumer talking about, well, you know, this this Obama thing is, uh, you know, with Iran, not such a good deal. They're sticking their necks out to be chopped off by Obama for going against them. They're gonna they're gonna bring others with them on this. This is not look. Lo, you want to talk about disruptive. It has been, I know Hillary is, is so embroiled with the email thing, but she's also being beat up by the, by the Republicans constantly, the candidates, especially Trump and a couple of others constantly, constantly. It is so bad that they're doing these polls, even on the left. And they're, they're saying, well, geez, I mean, Hillary's getting trounced by just about everyone on the GOP side. And it is so bad 
both because of what Trump has done and what the GOP con- uh, contenders keep doing to her and what she's doing to herself uh, in the in, in, by by the right, keeping this whole email gate in the forefront. And it's expanding even without them because the FBI is not political at all that now you have the left talking about, oh, gee, damn, we might need to have a backup plan and get somebody to replace her. And they were they are so scared of losing losing it that they even even if it was for a short period of time considered Al Gore. Look, if they're considering Al Gore, you know that their numbers, their own polling numbers are telling you that Hillary Clinton is currently dead. There is not going to be a revival of this woman as far as, you know, her, her political campaign is concerned. Now, I know you should never rule out Hillary, but let me tell you something. If they keep going in this direction, if the GOP and the FBI and and others like me keep pounding on this woman for on this reason alone, as well as her, because this has everything to do with her lack of success of being a public servant uh, as a senator, as a first lady, a senator and a secretary of state. If they keep hammering on all her failures and then add on top of that her email gate. She is dead in the water. The Democrats now know this. So they were even looking at, well, we better come up with an alternative because the alternative right now is Bernie Sanders. Do we really want to have... Because Sanders is not going to win a national election. He's not going to win. The Democrats, you know, he may be ga- gathering 28,000 people, but he's not Barack Obama. He's not going to win. So they're looking, oh, my gosh, we better come up with an alternative. So, hey, yeah, Mr. Biden, well, if Biden isn't interested or if he's, you know, hemming and hawing, we better find somebody that can replace him. Al Gore, how about Al? If you're going to Al Gore to be a potential replacement for Hillary, you know that the Democrats know with their own polling numbers, which are very accurate because, you know, they look, if, if you want to know what 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 is really going on in a campaign, you look at the campaign's actual real numbers because they need to know exactly what's going on. And if they're out there say, touting that, oh, poss- well, even considering Al Gore, even if it's for a short period of time, well, maybe we can get Al. The numbers that the Democrats have are worse than what we know. Think about that. If the Democrats are, you know, hey, maybe we can get Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren, who's already thrown her support by Bernie uh, under Bernie Sanders completely. Yeah, she loves Bernie. In fact, people are talking about, well, maybe Bernie should have her as a running mate. And they're saying, well, okay, maybe we should try to get, you know, Elizabeth Warren into the race. Why? Simply because she's a female? Because she's exactly a Bernie Sanders. She's not, she cannot win a national election right now. She cannot win nationally. So now, well, okay, we got to get uh, maybe Joe Biden or Al Gore. So you know when they start looking like that and start considering old retreads like Al and, and stick your foot in your mouth every single day, Biden, you know the poll internal polling numbers that they have are so bad. They are bad, bad. They're not going to share those internal polling numbers, but let me tell you, if they... This is just the way it is, folks. This is if the look, I, I found this out under uh, when uh, George Herbert Walker Bush, because, uh, uh, you know, my family had had, had a friend who was actually um, on Air Force One. He was part of he wasn't Secret Service. He was Air Force, but he was on Air Force One uh, with George Herbert Walker Bush and during Clinton's first term. But when he was on on the plane with George Herbert Walker Bush, uh, he would relate. To our family that, yeah, the internal polling numbers do not look good for Bush. They don't look good. And, 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 you know, the numbers that we saw nationally that they were showing us, they look, oh, it's close. It's close. No, 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 no. He said they were running scared because their internal numbers showed Bush losing big time. And look what happened. Bush lost pretty big. Herbert Walker Bush lost pretty big to Clinton. 
And he knew that because of the internal polls that they have. Those internal polls are dead accurate, folks. They know what the hell is going on. Because they have to know. They need to know. In order to win win a campaign like this, they have to know exactly what's going on. You know, the, these all these external polls out there, you know, from MSNBC and ABC and Quinnipiac and, and, you know, and all the others, whether they be right or left leaning, it doesn't really matter. Those are BS numbers. The real numbers are in the internal polls. And if people are running scared already in the Hillary and Democratic camps, it's because their internal polls are telling us or telling them that it's bad for Hillary. Very bad. Just, you know, look, look, Hillary, you know, um, <laughs> North Carolina poll from Rolling Stone has Donald Trump with 40% of the vote and Hillary with only 38%. Now, if you were listening to, to liberal Democrats, there's no way in hell that, I mean, that's pretty much, uh, there's a polling error of three percentage points either way. So that's basically a statistical dead heat. There's no way in hell that Donald Trump is supposed to be in a, is in a statistical dead heat with a Democratic front runner already. No possible way. I'm telling you, folks, she's in trouble. They know she's in trouble. So that's why they're looking for external for a way out of her. Try, don't doubt me. On this well, that sound means we are out of time for tonight. We'll be back here tomorrow. For a free for all Friday, I'm Rod Echoes. This has been the Rod Echoes Show. Have a wonderful night, folks. I'm out. in talk radio on the internet right here on k98talk.com when our water heater broke down last month it was a nightmare it took five hours for the plumber to show up and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out then it cost another eighteen hundred dollars to put in the new water heater By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break, and at the worst possible time. Call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now now ask how you can save up to 50 percent on washer and dryer coverage just call 1-800-513-6154 that's 1-800-513-6154 again 1-800-513-6154 call now Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 
$1 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. 